when you think about where figure could really um, support the workforce, can you give us a little bit of color on which industries you think have the most potential to bring in your first iteration of the figure one robot? Yeah, well, thanks for having me on today. Um, I think from like a very long-term perspective, um, we're building humanoids to do any type of physical labor that humans do today. And our go-to-market plan is to get into revenues of the business as fast as possible. Those early applications for us uh, have been in areas such as manufacturing, retail, and warehousing. We're, we're cons in, on that end, we're spending a considerable amount, amount of time in warehouses today. Um, so we hope over the next you know, several years, we can see early applications of our robots doing physical labor work um, in, in a warehouse, such as you know, picking items, unloading trucks, restocking shelves, depalletizing. Uh, and ultimately, we hope that humanoids can play a very big role in helping to fill this physical labor like void that we're seeing in the economy today. And there's almost 11 million unfilled jobs in the US. Mm -hmm. We hope that our solution here long term can help uh, really make an impact. Brett, what you described sounds similar to how machines or robots currently sort and retrieve inventory inside Amazon's gigantic warehouses. Uh, how will you improve and refine that? Yeah, I think if you walk into like a warehouse today or even like most most like, you know, companies, everything that could be automated is mostly automated today with just, you know, great robotic solutions overall. And there's a tremendous amount of work that's being done by humans that are kind of more complicated, that need extra degrees of freedom, that need to interact with some type, some type of shelf that's hard for a robot to do, or at least a single purpose robot to do. And we we believe strongly that, you know, humans built this world around ourselves to interact with a human form. And so almost as like universal general interface is a human body. If we can build a robot that can interact with that physical world similar to humans, we can come in and do human type work day one. So that means walking into a warehouse where, you know, Amazon or a bunch of these bigger groups out there have hundreds of thousands of employees that are turning over 100% per year. They're having, uh, it's really hard work. They're walking 10 miles a day, picking 50 items an hour. And, you know, the, it can be really hot and cold conditions. And um, there's basically a giant labor shortage happening here across mm -hmm. that. And we hope that we can basically go in and start doing those applications without with basically minimal interaction or minimal changes to the environment. Brett, when I think about uh, kind of the, the area that your fresh cash is going to fund, you've also got folks like Sanctuary AI, 1X, Tesla's Optimus, Google. A lot of names are pushing into kind of this humanoid robot space. I would figure getting into a factory or a warehouse, um, those kind of clients don't want to change over from one tech to another. I'm sure the race is on. How are you looking to beat out that kind of big, also well-funded competition? Yeah, the space is certainly getting um, like really heating up, which is, I think, really positive overall. Um, the ultimate goal for us is to do useful work. Like We need to basically walk in and see a robot doing like boring, useful things all day long. And that's like the ultimate goal that we set out to in the near term is can we design a robot and can we test it? So in our lab here, we have a full warehouse built end to end. Uh, we're starting to have a conversations with some of the bigger warehousing groups uh, worldwide. And our goal is ultimately to prove that out. So we're spending a lot of this capital uh, today on just overall robot development and manufacturing. Uh, we're building out an end to end data engine so that our robots can get into the market uh, ingest data to help train our neural nets. And then we're spending a lot of time on the commercial side. Like what are the right, you know, first applications for us? And then ultimately, how do we scale the robot across many applications over time? Sure. One of the big criticisms or concerns about uh, building more robots is they will take human jobs. And I know you've addressed how we have a giant labor shortage, and so this is designed to help solve for that. But I wonder, as you look at um, what the prospects for your humanoid robots are, what kind of new jobs can be created because you have these humanoid robots? What do you foresee happening down the road? I mean, you have an ability to basically scale into almost infinite amount of production. And it's gonna be really incredible as we think about what this can do to GDP, what this can do to ultimately to the economy when there's no like per capita constraints. Um, like ultimately humanoids should be able to do any physical thing a human can. So if we have like infinite ability to scale humanoids, like what does that really do to the economy? It's, it's quite hard to fathom. We hope that we fill this area in the labor market, which is we've seen tremendous amount of job shortages. We hope over time there's a consumer aspect of putting a humanoid in a home 
helping care for the elderly. And we think there's a big market opportunity for space over time and that humanoids can help colonize planets. So we think over time, there's a wide range of applications, mm -hmm. even like you know, existing ones and also new we can deploy into, um, I think to build what maybe one of the biggest businesses ever built.